Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about foreign exchange markets and foreign exchange rates. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. So first we're going to talk about exchange rates. Exchange rates are the price of one currency or the value in terms of another currency. So if we're looking at the exchange rate for the US dollar, it can be priced in Japanese yen. One dollar is worth 136.49 yen. One dollar is also worth 82.29 rupees. And one dollar is worth 0.95 euros. And we can flip those exchange rates around and focus on the values of the foreign currencies. One rupee is worth 1.2 cents. One euro is worth $1.06. And one yen is worth 0.73 cents. And those exchange rates do fluctuate. They freely float due to supply and demand. And when the exchange rate increases, we say that the currency has appreciated. And when the exchange rate, which is the price of the currency, decreases, we say the currency has depreciated. So if we have $1 being worth 20 pesos, which is the same thing as one peso being worth 5 cents, if the exchange rate changes and $1 is now worth 25 pesos, which means one peso is worth 4 cents, then that means that the dollar has appreciated and the Mexican peso has depreciated. So which is better for your currency to appreciate or for it to depreciate? Well, when your currency appreciates, it's going to help people who buy foreign made products. At the same time, it's going to hurt people who sell the domestic products to foreign consumers. And when our currency depreciates, it's going to benefit people who sell US exports and it's going to hurt people who buy imports from other countries. And we can use exchange rates to determine the price of something in different currencies. If one peso is worth five cents, which is the same thing as a dollar being worth 20 pesos, and we have a soda made in Mexico that costs 40 pesos, we can convert that 40 peso price into a dollar price by using the exchange rate. If we want to use the peso exchange rate, we are going to multiply. So we're going to take the 40 pesos and times it by the five cents. If on the other hand, we wanted to use the other currency, in this case, that is the US dollar, we would actually divide by the 20 pesos that the dollar is worth. Whichever exchange rate we use, we're going to either way come up with a $2 price for that 40 peso soda. When it comes to determining the exchange rates, it's going to be determined by supply and demand. First, we're going to talk about the demand for the currency. When it comes to graphing foreign exchange markets, we have the quantity of the currency on the x-axis. In this case, it's the quantity of US dollars. And on the y-axis, we have the price of the currency. This is the price of US dollars in pesos or pesos per dollar. So when it comes to our demand curve, that's going to be downward sloping, just like most other demand curves you've learned about in this class, because at high exchange rates, we're going to have a low quantity of currency demanded, and at low exchange rates, we will have a higher quantity of currency demanded. When it comes to supply curves, those are going to be upward sloping, and that's because at high exchange rates, we have high quantities of the currency supplied, and at low exchange rates, we have low quantities of the currency supplied. When you put the supply and demand together on the same graph, it gives us our foreign exchange equilibrium. Like other markets we've learned about where the two curves intersect, that gives us our equilibrium price. In this case, it's our exchange rate and the equilibrium quantity of currency. We can have a surplus of currency when the exchange rate is higher than the equilibrium exchange rate. There we will have the quantity demanded being less than the quantity supplied. And as long as this exchange rate is freely floating, we are going to seek that equilibrium and the exchange rate is going to fall to the equilibrium exchange rate. If on the other hand, we have the exchange rate being below equilibrium, that's going to cause a shortage. And as long as we have freely floating exchange rates, the exchange rate is going to rise towards equilibrium. Changes in the exchange rate are caused by changes in supply or demand for the currency. When it comes to demand, we have some shifters. And the first one is the demand for exports. Because when foreign consumers demand US products, they are going to have to sell their currency and supply it while demanding US currency. The first thing that impacts the demand for exports is foreign taste. If foreign consumers have an increase in their preference for US made goods, that's going to increase the demand for US dollars. Next, we have foreign national income. If other countries have booming economies, that means those foreign consumers are gonna buy more of everything, including 
US made goods and they will have to demand US dollars in order to pay for them. If on the other hand we have recessions in the rest of the world, that means foreign consumers are going to buy less of US made goods and then they will demand fewer US dollars. The last aspect of demand for exports is price levels. When US price levels increase, that means our goods are relatively more expensive and that means foreign consumers will be less likely to buy our goods, so they will demand fewer dollars. The next category of shifter is interest rates, both interest rates in foreign countries and interest rates domestically. When foreign interest rates increase, foreign investors seek those high interest rates and foreign investment flows out of the countries with low interest rates and into the countries with high interest rates. So we're going to see a decrease in the demand for the countries with low interest rates and increases in the demand for currency with the countries that have high interest rates. And the last demand shifter is expected future exchange rates. If speculators expect a higher future exchange rate, they are going to demand more currency. I'd like to point out that these shifters here are all impacted by monetary and fiscal policy. Next, we're going to talk about the supply shifters. And some of these are very similar to the ones you just saw. First, we have the demand for imports. When US consumers are demanding more foreign made goods, they're going to supply more US currency to buy those foreign made goods. Things that impact the demand for imports are domestic tastes. If our taste for European goods decrease, we're going to supply fewer US dollars. Also, we have domestic national income. If our economy booms, we're going to buy more of everything, including goods made in other countries. So we will supply more US dollars in the foreign exchange markets. And price levels are another supply shifter because when the price levels in our countries or in other countries change, it impacts the relative price of those goods. So if Europe has a decrease in their price level, that means their goods are relatively cheaper. And so US consumers will supply more US dollars to buy those cheaper goods. On the supply side, we also have interest rates as being a shifter. If US investors are seeking high interest rates elsewhere in the world, they will supply more US dollars to get those high interest rates. And lastly, we also again have expected future exchange rates. And just like on the demand side of things, we have these supply shifters that are impacted by monetary and fiscal policy. Now, when it comes to the foreign exchange market, it can be tricky. We aren't talking about the supply and demand for the currency within a country. These are international markets. I think it's helpful to think of the foreign exchange market as a box in the middle of the ocean. Currency is put into that box to be exchanged for currency coming out of that box. Anytime currency goes into that box, it's going to be the supply of the foreign exchange market. Anytime money comes out of that box, that is the demand for the currency within the foreign exchange market. The supply side of the foreign exchange market is predominantly domestic spenders. Domestic spenders are going to supply their currency as they demand currency from other countries. And that means foreign spenders are going to be the demanders for the currency in question. When foreign consumers buy US made goods, they must demand our currency while they supply theirs. Changes in the amount of money going into that box are shifts in the supply. Changes in the amount of money coming out of the box are changes in demand. Next, we're going to talk about a couple of examples. Let's first say that the United States national income or gross domestic product decreases. When our GDP decreases, we buy fewer goods and services, including goods and services made in other countries. That means that we are going to decrease our imports from other countries. And since Mexico is one of the US major trade partners, Mexico is going to see a decrease in their exports. So in the market for US dollars, we are going to see a decrease in the supply of US dollars as US consumers buy fewer Mexican made goods. So they supply fewer dollars in the foreign exchange market. That decrease in the supply is going to increase the equilibrium exchange rate. And so the US dollar has appreciated. Over in the market for Mexican pesos, we are going to see a decrease in the demand for pesos because US consumers are buying fewer of their goods. And that means the Mexican peso is going to depreciate. And so when one currency appreciates, the comparison currency is going to depreciate. When one currency sees the supply shift to the left, the other currency is going to see the demand shift to the left. If the United States sees an increase in its interest rates, then foreign investors are going to seek those high interest rates. That means the United States is going to see a financial capital inflow. That financial capital inflow means that foreign investors will demand more dollars. At the same time, if investors already have US dollars or if US investors have dollars, they'll be less likely to supply them in the international markets because they can't earn higher rates of return 
elsewhere. And so that's also going to decrease the supply of US dollars in the foreign exchange markets. Both of those shifts are going to cause an increase in the equilibrium exchange rate and the US dollar is going to appreciate. Over in Mexico, they're going to see a financial capital outflow as foreign investors seek the higher interest rates they can get in the United States. And so in the market for the peso, we are going to see an increase in the supply of pesos as foreign investors sell their pesos so they can demand US dollars. And since Mexico has a lower relative interest rate, foreign investors are less likely to demand the Mexican peso. As a result, we are going to see a decrease in the equilibrium exchange rate for Mexico. That means the peso has depreciated. As far as a little side note, that financial capital inflow and outflow is going to mean that Mexico's supply of loanable funds is going to decrease and the United States is going to see an increase in the supply of loanable funds as financial capital flows out of Mexico and into the United States. We've got one more example here. Let's say that the United States price level increases. When that happens, we're going to see United States imports increase because foreign made goods are relatively cheaper and that means U.S. consumers are going to increase the supply of U.S. dollars as they buy foreign made goods and demand foreign currencies to buy those goods. At the same time, we're going to see a decrease in U.S. exports because foreign consumers will see our high price levels as more expensive goods and that's going to decrease the demand for U.S. dollars as foreign consumers are less likely to demand our dollars to buy our products. Both of those shifts are going to cause a decrease in the equilibrium exchange rate and the U.S. dollar is going to depreciate. Over in the market for pesos, Mexico is going to decrease their imports from the United States because they are relatively more expensive and that means that they are going to decrease the supply of Mexican pesos in the international foreign exchange market. Also, because foreign consumers are going to see their products as cheaper than they are in the United States, we are going to see an increase in Mexican exports, and as a result, we're going to see an increase in the demand for Mexican pesos. Both of those shifts are going to increase the equilibrium exchange rate for the peso, so the peso is going to appreciate. Now, when it comes to the AP exam, they've never required that you do the double shifts for the last two examples you just saw. The questions in the past have always either asked for a specific curve to be shifted, or they haven't specified, and in that case, either curve being shifted has been accepted. But it's important for you to understand that when it comes to price levels and interest rates, we're going to see double shifts. And there you have it. That's the basics of the foreign exchange market and exchange rates. If you're ready to learn more, don't forget to check out the next two videos about the foreign exchange market. We're going deeper here. If you're ready to practice shifting the foreign exchange market graphs, make sure you check out the foreign exchange market game from reviewecon.com. If you need a little more help after that, Pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.